Micro ultrasound is a new prostate imaging technology that we've seen in clinical trials in the past couple years, but now we're starting to see it in real world practice. But we wanna know, how does it affect staging? How is it going to affect biopsies? How is it going to affect treatment or active surveillance protocols? So today, Dr. Mark Schulz, who's a 30 year medical oncologist who's focused solely in prostate cancer, is going to answer our questions. So today, Dr. Schulz, we're talking about micro ultrasound. This is a newer technology that has come out in prostate cancer in the past couple of years. And a lot of patients are wondering, is this the newest and greatest thing that we need to be paying attention to? And so what exactly is micro ultrasound? I'll call it a new improved type of ultrasound, which we use for uh, uh, prostate imaging. Prostate imaging has become such an important substitute for the, the historical random biopsy. The prostate's a small gland. And throughout the 90s and, you know, 2000 up to 2005, 2010, uh, even 2015, we didn't have any super good imaging. We had ultrasounds. They couldn't confidently find the cancers inside the gland because prostate cancer tends to look like prostate gland. The default way to decide how much cancer was there and where was it was to do a grid pattern biopsy. We call it a random biopsy. Random biopsies are still popular. There's um, about a million men a year that have random biopsies, probably unnecessary in light of all the new developments that we've had with imaging. So micro-ultrasound imaging is different than historical ultrasound because uh, it's much higher resolution. Um, standard ultrasounds use what's called a 9 megahertz uh, uh, level of intensity, and the micro-ultrasound is something like 29 megahertz. It uh, means that they can make uh, the image, when it's expanded, uh, not lose resolution. And uh, when you're looking at a small target, and perhaps a small tumor in, in that target, which is the gland, you want to have high resolution so you can be sure that you're identifying where the cancer is. Why is this useful? Well, I think it, uh, it's useful in the transition from random biopsies to targeted biopsies. We've had videos that we've covered this before, as to advantages and disadvantages of targeted versus random biopsies. I won't go into that in detail, but I think just on the surface, it's kind of obvious that if you're going to do a biopsy, you want a needle to go into the suspicious area and not just be fishing around with needles the way we do with random biopsies. So micro ultrasound is a more precise ultrasound that uh, I think is an enhancement that enables doctors to do better targeted biopsies. Before I get to my next question, please click that subscribe button. When you do this, it tells YouTube that these videos were helpful for you, and it takes our videos and promotes them to other patients who are searching for prostate cancer answers. Also, if you would like to join our cause, you could do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation with Dr. Schultz. So how is micro ultrasound, how does it compare against 3T MRIs, which we're, you know, talking about a lot on this channel and telling people even before you get a random needle biopsy to go get a 3T MRI. So would this be better? Definitely not better. I think that uh, the studies that have been done show that the image quality from a high resolution ultrasound uh, might approach that of an MRI. And you say, well, yeah, but what advantage could there be? There is a convenience factor. The doctors that are doing these ultrasounds can do it in the doctor's office, so you don't have to go to a specialized facility. Uh, you don't need any IV contrast with it. And the way we've also done it, we use something called color Doppler ultrasound, is it can be complementary as well. So if a person's already had an MRI, the abnormality or the lesion that's detected, if there is a lesion, uh, is described anatomically where in the gland it is. And then when you go and do an ultrasound, you can look in that corner of the prostate and see if it is visible on the ultrasound. And therefore, you can then track that spot pretty easily. This is something that we do in our practice where uh, MRI has identified a 10 millimeter lesion in the left mid prostate. So that's a very specific area of the gland. Put an ultrasound, this is done through the rectal wall, and you see a uh, 10 millimeter lesion in the left mid gland. It's providing confirmation. And, uh, and then doing biopsies of these spots is actually easier when you can actually see it with the ultrasound. It's been already delineated by the previous MRI, and it's very easy to take a targeted biopsy if that's what you wanna do. So these high resolution grayscale uh, ultrasounds, which are 
becoming a little more popular is uh, being very similar to the way we've been using ultrasound for a number of years. You know, in 2021, we got PSMAs, and that was a huge move for prostate cancer when it came to prostate imaging. So how do you compare localized, you know, the localized image of a PSMA scan versus microultrasound? Well, you're getting better resolution with either MRI or microultrasound compared to a PSMA scan. But the beauty of the PSMA scans are first, pretty much only lights up with cancer. So it gives you uh, a diagnostic feedback with more precision. Ultrasound and MRIs, they, we see a shadow. Uh, until we put a needle in that to confirm that it's prostate cancer, we can't be 100% sure that the shadow is cancer. But uh, with PSMA, of course, it is designed to light up just with cancer. The other very attractive thing with PSMA and, and men with localized disease is that uh, it may pick up a second lesion somewhere else in the prostate that was possibly missed on these scans or previous random biopsies. So PSMA is, again, a nice complementary resource for giving good information, but it doesn't have the same precise resolution that MRI and ultrasound do. When it comes to microultrasound, is it going to improve patient, you know, random needle biopsies, targeted biopsies? Do you see that microultrasound is going to be the new technology that goes along with that? Where is this placed currently and where do you see it placed in the future? I think like so many things in the prostate world, we're seeing more and more specialization. And this is even happening in the imaging world where I think doctors that are used to using MRIs, uh, there's a type of technology with old-fashioned ultrasounds called fusion technology where they can take the MRI images, load it into an ultrasound machine, and the ultrasound then will use the MRI information to show you where, where the problem is. So uh, we've got all these different competing technologies. Is this new high-resolution ultrasound good enough to find a place in the marketplace? I think it is. But it's going to take doctors who dedicate themselves to just using that technology and, uh, and, and honing their skills. And if they're diligent and they get enough uh, experience and practice, then uh, it's definitely useful because it's an office procedure rather than having to go down to have a biopsy inside an MRI, for example. I think it will have a place. Uh, there are other existing technologies we've mentioned, such as color Doppler or fusion uh, uh, type uh, technologies with ultrasound that also work quite well. Uh, which have their own merits. And so I don't think it's going to take over the marketplace, but I think there will be experts who develop skills with this type of uh, high-resolution ultrasound and that it will function well. Since it has similar capacities to what an MRI could do, is micro-ultrasound, do you ever see micro-ultrasound taking the place of an MRI and that being the first line of defense and doctors preferring that and then maybe even making a grading system the way we do with MRIs? Like, do you see that happening in the future? I don't think so. I think the MRI people have got enough momentum now. Uh, MRIs have been around since 2015 and they've been constantly ref refining the MRI technology. So it's getting better and better every year. It's becoming standardized. Uh, we do know that you have to still go to a good quality MRI center to get trustworthy information. So people that are still in their learning curve with MRIs, you've got to get their work double checked. And you can do that. You can get the images from a center that's just getting started on a disk and have it sent to a reference center you know, such as Cornell or, or uh, NYU, UCLA, UCSF, and have it over read and to make sure that the readouts are accurate. The high resolution ultrasound I think is gonna remain more of an office procedure that certain skillful physicians can use in conjunction with MRI to uh, simplify biopsies and perhaps simplify ongoing monitoring for men on active surveillance. But the specificity, unless you stick a needle in the lesion, and that's something I always want to do as a last resort, is not going to surpass that of MRI. And uh, for that reason, I think MRIs will continue to be the sort of the standard. So two issues patients face is affordability and access. So currently, is microultrasound covered by insurance? Well, yes, definitely. Uh, microultrasound is covered by insurance, and uh, just as traditional ultrasounds have been covered for many, many years. So as far as availability for microultrasound, is this a widespread available imaging modality? You know, do we see that major centers and universities are doing this all across the U.S.? Or are you seeing that certain centers are more, you know, practiced and they're using it more often and that's where patients should go? That's always the case, of course, is you want to find the centers of excellence. But there, no, there are not that many of these installed around at this point. They are out there. It looks like they're going to be here to stay and uh, the doctors that uh, have been doing this are gaining experience and, and it's, uh, 
It's a useful technology. So in prostate cancer, we have a huge community of Gleason 6 prostate cancer patients who are doing active surveillance. How do you see micro ultrasound affecting the active surveillance protocol in the future? Well, I think it's going to be an access question, just like you talked about. It's not widely available everywhere, but if uh, patients on active surveillance have uh, entree to a center that's experienced, uh, I think it's a nice substitute for the traditional approach we've used, of course, is to get an MRI once a year. We have in patients who've had stable disease often done uh, alternating color Doppler ultrasound uh, once a year with MRI once a year and uh, gone back and forth. Some patients we've just used color Doppler alone. Most patients we've relied more heavily on uh, multiparametric MRI. There's no uh, fixed rule of thumb, but uh, the technology is, is definitely good enough to get good, nice, clear pictures of the prostate. And if there's a, an index lesion, it's easy to follow it sequentially with imaging to see if it's growing or changing. And that has been our default methodology for active surveillance is to, to watch these known index lesions and uh, if they grow or change to do a targeted biopsy and make sure that the, that the grade has not changed or that there's not a newer lesion coming up in another part of the prostate that you have to do a targeted biopsy on. So I think it lends itself well to, uh, as a good tool for active surveillance. So as Dr. Schultz said, microultrasound is an exciting new imaging modality. It's so cool that we can see with greater resolution what's going on in the prostate, what the tumor size is, where is it, how does it look. And all of this information is going to help you have better outcomes if you decide to treat or if you're monitoring prostate cancer with Gleason 6 and active surveillance. I think a couple of questions to ask your doctor are, is this available to me? And if microultrasound is not available, it's okay. MRI is still a really great option. These 3T MRIs are still able to give us a lot of information. However, if it is available, I would ask your doctor, you know, how do I get it? What is the procedure and process of all of that like? But also, how is this going to affect my prostate cancer, either treatment plan, or again, if you're an active surveillance patient, the monitoring process of active surveillance over time? This is an exciting new technology, and what I would think about it, when I think about it, I think about it as a tool. You know, you have 3T MRIs, you have PSMAs, and now we have microultrasound. And where do these options fit in my prostate cancer journey? If you need help developing questions to, you know, talk to your doctor and talk to your medical team, you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline. They're prostate cancer patients who have been trained by our medical oncology team, and they are able to help you develop your questions so that you have better outcomes when you come to your doctor's appointments, and it really just helps solidify your prostate cancer knowledge and develop your research. If you would like to donate to our organization, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Our goal is to get videos like this out to people all over the world who need them. Please remember, most of all, you're not alone, and I hope you have a great week.